2011 was the centennial for the museum. We were very, very lucky to be written into a grant by the Center for East Asian and Pacific Studies. All the pieces in this exhibit are just highlights from a very large collection gave, given to us by uh, one of our donors, whose name is Fred Freund. Beautiful, beautiful wooden carvings from Japan and from China. Dan Ketting, who is a professional storyteller, has picked three stories that go with the pieces that you see in the exhibit. Dan is also one of the ones who will be in the Japanese martial arts demonstration that we are holding in collaboration with this exhibit. Well, I've been doing Iaido for almost 11 years, and Mark, you've been doing it for how long? Uh, about five years. About five years. And the Iaido class has always been a very close class. Um, we've very strong friendships in, in the class, mostly because we're one of the few classes that's mainly adults. So we have a, a close relationship, close bond, if you will. Also because when you practice with these kind of weapons, you know, you really have to trust your, your partner. Iaido teaches you um, balance, it teaches you poise, it teaches you uh, both physical and um, mental um, determination and, you know, concentration and all these things come together and it also teaches you to strive for personal perfection. When I was in Japan, I've seen people correct people and they'll move their sword like a quarter of an inch and they'll say, that's it, that's it. And you go, how will I ever remember this? <laughs> but you do, you do. The great thing about Iaido is there's no end to it. I've seen seventh and eighth dons in Japan practicing the basic moves and walk away saying, someday I'll get it right. And they've been doing it for 40 years. <laughs> the art that I study, and that we'll be, we'll be demonstrating at the museum, one of them anyway, is uh, Kobudo, also called Kobujitsu. Um, Kobudo is the study of the classical weapons of Okinawa. Back in the 1600s, the uh, Japanese invaded uh, Okinawa and in short, basically banned the, the practice of any type of martial art or any, the, any type of uh, having any kind of army, military, that sort of thing. As the story goes, the, the peasants, the farmers, they turn to their everyday agricultural tools to, to defend themselves when, when needed. But everything kind of falls into uh, just tools, everyday tools that they would have had available to them that they could employ in uh, civilian defense when necessary. Okinawa was a central port between China, Japan, India, uh, what would have been Siam at the time. And so you have all these cultural influences coming into this small island of Okinawa. So a lot of the weapons, um, the martial arts, all these cultural influences kind of became a somewhat of a melting pot in Okinawa. We were able to hire two students, two U of I students, Becky Chan and William Armstrong, who were able to do all of the research that needed to be done on all of the artifacts Mr. Freund had given us so that they could do what a normal curator does. The story that they wanted was a story about warriors, guardians, and demons. The idea that for the Japanese the idea of protection is very important and loyalty and so we have an exhibit that talks about both human protectors, samurai, but also talks about supernatural protectors as well and also the demons that they fight with. It's uh, full of really cool things to see. We have special events on our website that you can see, like the Japanese martial art demonstration that, uh, if you've been here once, might bring you back again. <laughs>